Hey, hello and welcome back and that's right we're going to continue talking about the subject of mesh routers not routers routers you can go through that in the comments later on but let's continue talking about this device here this is the Valicia from GLI net and it is a new mesh router system on the market right now but for those that aren't aware mesh routers are a thing that I am surprised aren't bigger than they are. And I'm not just talking about people that, you know, prosumers and business users that buy like an enterprise class or business class router system for their own security. I'm talking home users as well. I think it's very odd that a lot of internet service providers, ISPs, that are dashing out and giving people routers every 18 months, two years with contracts, none of them really absorb the idea of mesh points. Mesh points are when you've got one router in your home or business environment that's plugged into your main internet connected source there via the uh, WAN port there, the WAN, and distributed along your home office environment are multiple positioned routers that all communicate via the back call, that's a communication at the back there, to allow your device while walking through your house from room to room carry the internet with you. What they do, rather than your device logging onto different internet connections in your home environment using things like uh, wireless extenders or taking advantage of power line adapters, what mesh routers do is they are basically the same SSID, they're the same network and indeed internet connection distributed over multiple nodes in a home or business environment. And as you move between devices, uh, between each of those router points, your phone, your tablet, your laptop, your whatever won't tell the difference. It's locked into the same SSID. It just happens to be passed over to the next mesh point with the mesh routers doing all the work. We come across this a lot in our day-to-day -day lives, whether it's we're going on trains or through hotels, which have enormous internet connections amongst that whole building because they've got multiple nodes. Mesh does that, but to a greater degree in most cases. And what makes this one, the Valicia, slightly different is it is incredibly open source. A lot of the mesh routers we've talked about here on the channel in the past, from the Synologies to the Googles to the Netgears, all of them that we talked about before are very closed systems. They arrive with their own proprietary software on board. You can't really play with it that much. And what you have is a system that has software their way, perhaps with uh, parental controls that are slightly behind subscription-based services, which is super annoying, or they are ones where the control schematics and the graphical user interface accessible via a mobile app or the desktop is either too complex to be understandable or too easy and chewable and crayon-like that you can't really control it. And this device tries to be something in the middle. In today's video, it's gonna be two parts. The first part, we're gonna unbox it and take a good look at it. Then we're gonna flick over to the um, setup screen of this device and have a little understanding of that control schematic there. Now this is the two node system. Again, there are one and three node systems and you can kind of expand your Wi-Fi network how you see fit in your own local environment. You open it up there. Again, things that make this device kind of stand out from a lot of mesh node systems. This has got two LAN ports on every node. Most routers that you see that support mesh. There's a satellite module that has like the majority of the LAN, the kind of wired connections, and every little satellite is a great deal more limited. This has kept things a great deal fairer and with parity across each of the different uh, connected routers on the network. The retail box is fairly underwhelming. I think we can agree there. It's quite normal. They've gone with the usual graphics with the, all the individual node points there as seen. And a little bit of information on the context. And there's an image there at the front of it. I mean, I think we should address the elephant in the room. I think a lot of you, have, if not, you've already know this and you're going to be wondering this. This is not a Wi-Fi 6 router. It doesn't take advantage of Wi-Fi 6 or AX. It takes advantage of ACN, all of those connections there. So it does put it, in my eyes, in a little bit of a disadvantage in 2021 when Wi-Fi 6 in a uh, prosumer or paid router is kind of an expectation. So the hope is that that open source nature in the back end there will somehow make up for that a lot more than it, you know, you might think. Well, we open it up, we've got two little packages inside there. One assumes uh, each one of those is going to be a, a Valicia unit. Let's get that out of there. And we'll open one up. They're gonna be largely identical anyway. 
and inside we've got the box there saying hello always a neat little touch there uh, we remove the extra bit of cardboard we have a gigabit LAN cable and that is a cat 6 cable very surprising that they would include a cat 6 cable if i'm honest given this is one gbe if anything ambassador you are spoiling us inside there we also have the uh, power mains power uh, mains power connector it's a hard plugged usb c adapter there and again there's regional plugs there to add on the end and then finally at the end there we have the router itself there's also a little bit of information there about setting the device up for the first time a little bit of information on your warranty there on the back and of course lots of information on mobile apps as well and that's pretty much it for your box let's put that there let's have a little look at what this device looks like and again it's quite nice in design uh, i'm again i'm not sure about it's that plasticky white i'm not wholly in love with that if we bring that closer to the camera there we've got the two led lights there to denote system activity and network health We've got ventilation there on the base. This device does not take advantage of active cooling. It's passive heat sinks all the way through. And there's a little bit of ventilation there at the top of the device that you can just about make out there. On the rear, we can see we've got our two LAN ports there. And again, we've got one WAN, wide area network, and LAN, land area network there. So again, you've got a LAN connection there. I would have liked to have seen maybe a little bit more um than two but not the end of the world it's still pretty good there and of course powered by usb-c there on the rear of the device you've got a synchronization button there which you would use to kind of get your different node devices connected without going into the graphic user interface which is quite neat there and again quite nicely sized there we will be testing that software shortly so why should you care what's the good points for this obviously it's not wi-fi 6 so i can hear a number of you have already walked away please come back if not i understand um, the device arrives uh, with a tri-band system, so it's got two 5 gigahertz networks and one 2.4 gigahertz network. So again, each of those 5 gigahertz networks uh, transmit, transmit up to a potential 86 megabytes of data. So that's on either of them, so you can combine that together. And the 2.4 gigahertz network for older or more streamlined, uh, more rudimentary devices, that's around 40 megabytes transmission there inside. Um, but I mentioned the open source stuff about this. It supports a whole lot of open source stuff, a lot of it arriving with it and other options, things that you can upgrade it or customize it to. As mentioned, because it is open source based in terms of its software injection, the result is that it's a far more pure configuration device to the real network aficionado that want to have an incredibly bespoke secure network. But otherwise, it is supported by open uh, VPN and WireGuard encryption, as well as secure authentication as well inside, which again, rather than using a, their own software, they have opened the door to others. Obviously, it's their own graphical user interface, something we'll show later on. It's also got integrated AdGuard, again, but there are links towards subscription services, so I'm gonna be interested to see when we go into the software, is that going to be behind a subscription? For those that aren't aware, um, AdGuard, it blocks ads, it blocks trackers. Basically, when you're browsing the internet, it stops trackers and ads at the point of source, so all your other connected devices don't have to tolerate that moving forward. Um, there's also Bluetooth support on this, which I think is interesting, but I'm not wholly certain where that's gonna factor in. Hopefully the software will tell us a little bit more there. And again, the two LAN ports there on the connection does mean you have got localized connectivity of up to 100 megabytes on each of those connections there to be utilized now in terms of internal hardware it's got a, a quad core um controller inside there an arm unsurprisingly the ipq4019 that's a controller that we talked about in the qnap routers system there the qmiro series and again that's a quad core 715 megahertz controller which i know with modern CPU architecture seems incredibly rudimentary, but in routers, that's actually pretty darn good. Uh, there's eight gig of EMMC memory, which useful for you know dealing with localized uh, storage on the fly when it needs it, but it's also 512 megabytes of DDR3 memory, which is kind of where the real business end of things are gonna be at. Um, again, I'm not 100% certain what I think about the design. Gotta say, I, I think, I like it, but it also feels like an air freshener in a bathroom, you know? Maybe I've not been to good bathrooms or two good bathrooms, but I'm not sure about that design. I quite like 
that it's flat walled. I quite like that, so it could be easily wall mounted there. Um, and then on top of that, you've got the idea that you can have multiple of these dotted around uh, different kinds of home and office environments. So the color scheme and the slight uh, matte texture plastic there is going to be useful for stopping light to bounce, I guess. Um, but I think we're not going to know for certain until we get this plugged in and we have a little look at that software there to learn a little bit more about it. Let's make our way to the screen. Okay, so we've made our way onto the desktop of my mobile phone here and we've got the GLI Net app here where we're going to set this device up for the first time and have a little look about what it can do, what are the settings are and other things we can play with. Uh, we're going to go ahead and see how far we can take this application without registering any kind of domain here. So let's go ahead and use without a cloud. And as you see right there at the top, the GLB2200, we're going to go ahead and set this device up for the first time. It's going to ask us to reboot the modem and make sure that we can see it so it can start its resync progress. We've rebooted the modem. Let's now click next and we've replugged in that router. So now we can go ahead and it's going to double check whether it is visible there. Ignore the pop up there on screen. There we go. It's found our device. There it is. It's got the name there on screen. So we can go ahead and click confirm. We've renamed it there, and now we've got the device all set up and initialized there. So we can go in and head into the Wi-Fi settings, and it should appear there for us on our available list of Wi-Fi connections. Okay, so we can continue with the setup process there while going into it, and that's going to ask us to set up our admin account credentials, which I'll do now. We're registering those details and now we have to say where this is going to be based if we were to create a whole mesh router system. For now, I would say that this is going to be one that we would use in an office. So we can flick along different options there where each one can be given an identity quite straightforward for what it is and where it lives in different home places. So this would be a workplace. Then we click confirm. Now we have to give uh, the SSID a name and a password. So let's just call this one the, we'll call this one NAS Compares. And then from there we can enter the password, which again we're going to keep it nice and easy. No brainer. And from there click Submit. And it's now going to create our Wi-Fi settings. Whereupon the Wi-Fi, apparently the router needs to restart. Then we have to go into our Wi-Fi settings to reinitialize connection with this router. The device has rebooted, so we can go in and register our connection to that connection that we set up earlier. There we go, we're going into it now. And boom, we're now going to be connected to our new Wi-Fi point, which is available here. And it has the internet connection because I've connected it into my modem. So there we go, from here we can now log into this device and start configuring that admin panel there. We're now going to log in and now we can access remote connectivity to this device and from here we can go ahead and start playing with the configuration options and seeing just what this device is capable of. As we can see the VPN client if we want to connect one of our existing VPN clients we can do that or we can use some of the preset settings already built into it where we can use our settings there for say for example OpenVPN. We have to use the file downloaded with our existing OpenVPN um, account and you can enter those keys there in order to set the VPN up with this. There's also another one for the kill internet switch which you may wish to use to enable um, remote killing of the network in case you're thinking of those intrusions. And of course we can set up a private sub-network if we like for guests. <clears throat> On top of that, moving forward, we can always uh, look at the firmware updates, as you can see there on screen. And on the bottom of the screen there, we can analyze a lot more about our network and configure a number of system options quite quickly and quite easily. Administrative access, we've already set up. And multiple devices connected via IPs on each of the individual nodes will be displayed there. We can change and dim some of the lighting menus there on the device. And of course, then you've got more proactive control of MAC addresses and more built into it there. Again, lots of configuration and CPU and utilization options at the top of the screen give us quite a lot of analytical information for a mobile application where typically mobile apps for routers are actually quite substandard typically. Of course, we can go ahead and utilize some of the open source clients there built into it. So if we use the OpenDDNS, we can enable some of those remote access protection protocols 
nice and easily there. Click save and boom, they're all done. Same goes for using the OpenVPN client once again from within those local plugins. There's lots of configuration options and stuff we can do. And then of course connected devices like the one I'm utilizing here will be listed and then we can set it as a favorite or block it if we so choose later on. And also it can give us more analytical information about them with the real time statistics being available to those connected devices in real time as we enable those statistics settings now. Now we can go into them and find out way more information about the upload, download, traffic utilization, and ultimately what it's doing on the network. We can even rename devices if we choose at the top. Moving back, we can go into the network protocol where it's got the layout of our network, and then we can change how some of the connected devices are physically or on the wireless network quite easily from the settings. And we can flick between if we're utilizing the LAN or the WAN settings on each of the individual nodes one by one. And you can even reset some of those quite easily at the single touch of a button. It's quite straightforward, this device. And although it's maybe a little bit intimidating, I think, for some people that aren't too aware of some of the open source stuff out there, I'm pleased to confirm that this device can be utilized even without a lot of that technical knowledge behind you. And of course, if you want to log into some of the cloud services from this particular router brand, you can go ahead and, and synchronize all of that together and utilize that for maybe your backups or some of your easy file access um, connectivity on this. I mean, the software itself isn't gonna win any major innovation awards in my opinion. I think it could be easier to review the software on this router if we were utilizing a lot of the third party open source software. And it's great that you can synchronize those assets and those software uh, platforms with this router, something I've not really seen before. And particularly the open WireGuard stuff, if we want to utilize open WireGuard, we still need to utilize our own profiles, but there's still a vast amount of supported VPNs and supported um, anti-ad stuff built into it there that we could utilize. They just all require a separate um, subscription service to be utilized. So don't be fooled into thinking buying this device will be inclusive of those licenses because I don't believe that to be the case. And I think if you already have a lot of those services, you may already have found ways to connect to them. This just makes it a great deal more straightforward to have all of those services at the router gateway on your local area network rather than on individual devices. Just know that you're probably going to need to have a little bit more technical nows behind you in order to do that. And the guides online from this brand, for the most part, are okay, but they're a little bit cloudy on the synchronization of a lot of those third-party platforms. But on the whole, I'm quite pleased with it. This router, although the design isn't overwhelming, you know, winning me over, and that support of the third-party plugins could be a pinch more transparent in every other regard. I actually quite like this router and I'm looking forward to my mesh router bandwidth testing very soon. If you want to learn about that, click subscribe so you stay tuned for when they go live. And of course, if you've enjoyed the video, click like. Go into the links in the description to find the link to NAS Compares, where we give free network and data security advice as well as data storage recommendations completely for free. It's manned by two guys, me and Eddie the web guy. We completely free advice, no payment needed. We don't do anything with your emails. We just give free advice and free recommendations as you need it. So do take advantage of that. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>